Prayers. This is the existence of God and the purpose of life, as promised Sunday, uh, November 17th. If we're always content with everything things that we see and hear, we will never arrive at true knowledge. Who said that? Plato, very smart guy. So, for the search of, of true knowledge, where shall we begin our quest? And I'm wondering if I should just take the glasses off. SpongeBob wants to know, for sure, and King Arthur and the Britons want to know. They're always in the eternal quest for the Holy Grail. TikToker, tap, tap the screen, share the live. Tap the screen, share the live. All right, they're coming in. Does God even exist? Why do I put God in quotes? Because <laughs> you ask 100 people about the existence of God, you get 100 different answers. That's for sure, right? Where do we go to find out whether or not there's a God? There's only one place you can go, and that's the creation. Let's take a look. In mankind, we have men and women, right? And we have a mind. We have an external form, a body, and a, a mind, or an intellect, emotion, and will, or heart of mankind, right? Further down the, the food chain, we got animals, which are male and female. They have something called an instinct. It's a little bit different. They do things instinctually. A, a, a spider is not taught how to make a web by its parents. It hops off the mother and begins weaving a web. Beavers are not taught how to build a dam. They just do it by instinct, right? So animals are instinctual. They do things. There's something in the computer world called CMOS or BIOS. It's instructions that are written in the computer that can't be changed. They're printed on the circuit board and you can't change those. RAM memory, random access memory, is something you can, you can change. You can make it go up and down. You can add to your memory. You can take your memory away. But BIOS and CMOS are permanent. Same thing in the animal world. They run by instinct. There's nothing they can do. A bird has to build a nest. <laughs> it can't build a dam. It can't build a web. It just can't do it, right? Further down, we got plants that have a stamen and pistil. Or an, an, an inherent directive nature. An inherent directive nature. A plant is amazing because imagine the processes that are going on with a plant, right? They're absorbing nutrients from the soil, water, nutrients, nitrogen, oxygen, etc. They're exchanging CO2 for oxygen. They're taking our poison and giving us back something we absolutely need for life. Unbelievable. The symbiosis between man and creation is absolute, right? Molecules, now it gets a little bit more interesting. Further down the chain, now we've got molecules. Classic example of a molecule, two atoms of hydrogen and then one atom of oxygen equals? Water, of course. Our chemistry major knows this. <laughs> so the interaction between, now hydrogen is a, one substance, oxygen is completely another, but together they become something completely different. Now it gets even more interesting. Further down the chain, molecules are made of atoms. Atoms have a proton, electron going down a neutron. They have an inherent directive nature, IDN, inherent directive nature. Something, something holds them in a prescribed orbit. There's molecular weight, there's molecular valence, there's speed, etc. Atoms are made of particles. Now it really gets interesting. <laughs> atoms are made of particles which have a positive negative valence and an inherent directive nature. And then, but what's the external form of a particle? Well, there is no external form of a particle. It's energy. And energy is invisible. So from the top of creation to the bottom, everything has an invisible origin. It's an, a laboratory provable fact. It's not supposition. It has nothing to do with faith. It is a laboratory provable fact. We're going to go deeper into that as we go along. In fact, there are four major forces in the universe. Strong force, weak force at the subatomic level, electromagnetism, and gravity. By Newtonian principle, Isaac Newton, <laughs> those four, by the law of Newtonian cause and effect, those four forces absolutely have to have an origin. Cause and effect. If those, are, those, are all, those four forces are measurable, TikTokers. <laughs> they're, they're coming in. So, it's just cause and effect. You can't escape it. You can't escape it. There has to be some kind of an origin. Let's go deeper into this. Isaac Newton, 300 years after the fact, 
To every action, there is an always an opposite and equal reaction. He's the discoverer of calculus, gravity, first reflecting telescope. And he made this, this observation. This most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent being. All variety of created objects which represent order and life in the universe could happen only by the willful reasoning of its original creator, whom I call the Lord God. People say, oh, religious people are easily led. You know, you just have no character of your own. No, I think we're in really good company. <laughs> I think we're in good company. Thank you very much. Oh, and then it goes to Max Planck. Oh, goodness gracious. Here, another stupid guy. <laughs> Nobel Prize for Physics in 1918. A contemporary of <laughs> Albert Einstein. They were homeboys. As a man who has devoted his whole life to the most clear-headed science to the study of matter, I can tell you as the result of my research research about atoms, there is no matter as such. In other words, you think that's solid. It's not. <laughs> For us, it is in the physical world, but it's actually atoms in motion at the subatomic level. And again, this is so important. He came, this, this quote is from 1944 in Vienna at a conference. He got the prize in 18. In 1944, he's saying this. This is after 30 plus years peering into a bleary eyed at three in the morning into an electron microscope watching atoms collide, right? He goes on. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. Solar system of the atom together. Everything from the macro level to the micro level, everything is in orbit. Is that not so, Takashi-san, our, our resident physics professor? <laughs> the Earth goes around in orbit around the sun, 93 million miles away. We're going at 68,000 miles an hour around the sun right now and rotating on our own axis at 900 miles an hour. At the macro level, at the micro level, protons and electrons spinning at impossible speeds, right? He concludes, oh my goodness, if this is not enough, he concludes, we must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Interesting that the word matrix is now entering the vernacular in the culture. The force, Star Wars, right? All right. <laughs> so, yeah. We're in good company. We're in good company as believers, right? Einstein, oh my gosh, the winning doesn't stop. Einstein said, I want to know, <laughs> what? What's Einstein saying this for? I want to know God's thoughts. All the rest are details. This is Einstein, <laughs> arguably one of the most intelligent men of the 20th century. He goes on and says, science without religion is crippled, and religion without science is blind. Yeah, enter the CERN Super Collider. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. The Higgs boson. 2012, they discovered the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson. Now, remember, this is the first part of our presentation. We're talking about the existence of God first. We've got to get God out of the way here, right? We want to bring him in and get him out of the way at the same time, right? Be because there's so much consternation in the world. There's, there's this nascent atheist movement impinging on the world right now. And it's so funny to watch it fall apart before our eyes because science, the very thing they thought would disprove God is actually creating a cul-de-sac they cannot get out of. They cannot get out of. I don't wish evil on them at all. I want them to open their minds and hearts. Just be open to the science. They say, follow the science, right? <laughs> We're asking them to follow the science. Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is sometimes referred to as the God particle. Wait a minute. You're kidding. No. No, I'm not. The God particle. Here you go, TikTok. The God particle. That's right. <laughs> Leon Lederman. The Higgs boson. Language of God. Francis Collins. Francis Collins uh, mapped the human genome and was a staunch atheist years ago. Once he started mapping the genome, he became a believer in God. He said, this is impossibly complex. This could not have happened randomly. DNA is too complex, right? The Higgs boson is sometimes referred to as the God particle. Much to the chagrin 
of the scientists who prefer the official name, the Higgs boson. Its discovery lends strong support to the standard model of particle physics, which is thought to govern the basic building blocks of matter. The Higgs boson particle is important to the standard model because it signals the existence of the Higgs field, an invisible energy field present throughout the universe, present throughout the universe, <laughs> that imbues other particles with mass. We talked about the four forces. If they are measurable, they have to come from somewhere. They have to have an origin. Since its discovery eight years ago, the particles have been making waves, get it? Waves in the physics community. Boom, boom. The, the one religion that, that understands and really grasps this uh, concept is pantheism. Pantheism says the doctrine that the universe conceived of as a whole is God, and conversely, that there is no God, but the combined substance, forces, and laws that are manifested in the existing universe. Yes, of course. The cognitive doctrine of pantheism asserts that God includes the universe as a part, though not the whole, of his being. Interesting. That in, in other words, the Higgs field is saying that there is a binding force that permeates the entire universe and holds it together. When we interfere with that process, we get Hiroshima and Nagasaki. When you start playing with atoms at the subatomic level, you see the, the kind of explosion. When you play with that process, <laughs> you get unbelievable unleashing of power, right? Reverend Dr. Sun Myung Moon of the Unification Church of which we are part of now, and his divine principle brings us an amazing phrase. He's got a, a degree in uh, electrical engineering, by the way, from University of Waseda in Japan, though he is Korean. Universal prime force. I love using this word all over the web. Yeah, just Willie. Love, love is the key, that's right, <laughs> you got it. Universal prime force. Interesting. That force we talked about is universal. It is prime. That means at the very base of the created world, beyond the atomic world, and it is a force. What an amazing way to describe the scientific nature of God. And I say to people on earth, when I'm debating atheists online, I tell them, look, the concept of God is a scientific principle even before it's a religious one. You have to start with existence to begin with and then go to character. You have to acknowledge the existence of God. I didn't become a Christian until I acknowledged, I think God exists. Once that happened, then I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Once I could assent to the possibility, being an atheist, once I assented to the possibility that God existed, I was able to move to the other side and then be filled with the Holy Spirit. So universal prime force, a precious, precious term. No one is using this in the scientific world. Reverend Moon brought this, this word to the scientific world. We talked about duality. So, essentially, what is that creator then? Based on this, what is the creator? The creator is the harmonized being. Of, it can only be whatever that creative force is. It's a harmonized being of everything positive, everything negative, everything masculine, everything feminine, internal character, intellect, emotion, and will. We talked about that. Inherent directive nature, emotion, intellect, and will, or heart, and the external form, the created world. We have a physical body, we have intellect, emotion, and will. The creator has the same thing intellect, emotion, and will, or heart. The driving force of the universe is actually the heart of God, is actually the heart of God. Behind all this majesty we see is the beating heart of God trying to love his creation. I believe, and I came up with this just the other day, something hit me. I was talking to Sister Gwen. I said, you know, if God is an eternally pre-existing being, there is no way that this is the only planet he ever created in the universe and the only universe he ever created. If he's eternally pre-existent, we don't know how many billions and billions of infinite years he must have created a whole bunch of other stuff along the way. We're one more. But we have our own providence, our own restoration, what we have to do here. It's our responsibility. People are talking about the UFOs and saying, they can't help you. <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. Even if there are UFOs, 
There are UFOs. There's unidentified flying objects. They're just seeing things they can't identify. Nine out of ten times, they're identified as gas, experimental aircraft. If you saw the F-117A aircraft before it was released to the public, you would swear it was from another planet. <laughs> you would swear it's from another planet. <laughs> so, this is the nature of God. The essential, quintessential nature of God is the harmonized. What, what a thing! What a thing! The harmonized being of all that is positive and negative. And again, when we flip on a switch, that light doesn't come on until you flip the switch. You engage positive and negative. Once that happens, energy happens. It's just an absolute universal principle. Even the Bible knows this. Oh my goodness. St. Paul, 2,000 years ago. Ha! For the... Wait a minute! He didn't say it. He didn't say invisible. Yes, he did. Ha! For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. What? The invisible things of him are clearly seen. Invisible things seen. Ha! This is brilliant. This is St. Paul. <laughs> Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Amen. How are we doing in here? Okay. So that's just a little... I mean, we're just scratching the surface on this, right? We'll leave that for now. Because I said this is a two-part presentation. The existence of God, number one. Number two, the purpose of life. Boom. Now we'll deal with the purpose of life. How are we doing on time? Can't see the clock. Okay. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the Judeo-Christian tradition. We're going to pull a concept out of the Bible, and we have to ask ourselves a very important question. Right, Sister Gwen? Yeah. We've got to ask some questions. Okay. Always got a question. Is new truth being revealed? Yes. Do you think new truth is being revealed, yeah. TikTokers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's take a look. If Jesus is a man of his word, and I think he is, he said in the 16th chapter of John 12 and 13, I can't make this stuff up, and I wouldn't make this stuff up. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, comes, wow, he will guide you into all, well, how much? All. <laughs> Thank you. For he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hears, he will speak, and he will, sh he will show you the things that are to come. Yes. It goes on. It doesn't stop there. Oh, my goodness. These things I've spoken to you in Proverbs, but the time comes when I shall no more speak to you in Proverbs, but... Oh, my goodness. What? I will show you plainly. Plainly of the Father. If that is not plainly of the Father, I do not know what is. I don't know what is. What else could be more plain? God just saying, here I am. Here I am. No secrets, no mysteries. You don't need faith for this. This is belief. I know. I know. <laughs> Rather than disproving God, <laughs> the CERN super collider proves the existence of a universal prime force. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. Oh my goodness. Help me. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Look out now. How do we know we're in that special time that Jesus talked about? There should be some way to identify that time, right? That's a bold pronouncement. Well, we should be able to prove that. Well, let's do it. <laughs> Adam and Eve were in the ideal. They had a fall of some sort. That's a whole different lecture. 2,000 years after the fall, Moses comes with the Ten Commandments and the Old Testament. Finally, out of the chaos of the fall... Man now has rails to run on. Thou shalt, thou shalt not. Don't, I have to say unalive. You can't say the K word in, you t in TikTok. They'll throw you right off. Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> so now man has rails to run on. Thou shalt, thou shalt not. There's some kind of order out of absolute mayhem. It's so bad that in Genesis 6, 6, the Bible says that God repented that he made man. What? Grieved his heart that he had made man. Flood comes, etc., etc. That's another story. So, Moses comes with the Ten Commandments. 2,000 years later, Jesus comes with the New Testaments and Gospels. Do we see a pattern here? Is God's truth evolving and progressing in an upward fashion? God doesn't stay still. Jesus 
is unceremoniously unalived, unalived, assassinated. I said it. And he says, I got to come back. There's going to be a second coming. Or what we call the completed testament age. We still have a whole period of time we have to deal with where God will consummate history. Here's the interesting part. Every 2,000 years, like clockwork, God opens a brand new level of the providence. Like you can set your clock to it. Set your TikTok to it. Boom! God is trying to build the ideal. God has been working for 6,000 biblical years to bring back the kingdom of heaven on earth. Glory. Why does it take so long? Why does it take so long? Because we have, what is that thing we have? You might want to venture a guess. What do we have that slows the providence down so much? Free will. Free will. We can choose to not do God's will. God doesn't force you to do anything. Right? We have to want to do the right thing. If we look at this, just for fun, this is, a, this is like a Jeopardy, or like trivia item. If you take the word history, divide into two words, you get, interestingly, his story. How terribly interesting. That and 250 will get me on the bus. I understand that. However, history may not be just a series of random disconnected events, but actually following formula, formula, uh-oh, inescapable. God is so powerful, he's going to bring back the kingdom of heaven, Hallelujah. whether we like it or not. Right. How do we know we're in that time? The Bible says knowledge will increase. Look, 2400 B.C., the abacus. Ooh, wow, big invention. <laughs> this changed a lot of things, right? After that, crickets. <laughs> Till we get to about 1500, and all of a sudden, kaboom! Science and technology absolutely take off like never before in such a concentrated time there's never been more innovation than this time the bible says watch out for it knowledge will increase that's one sign number two many shall run to and fro there's a thousand airplanes in the air 24 7. all the time there's a thousand airplanes flying right now a thousand wars and rumors of war there, there's the plane <laughs> i knew it was coming wars and rumors of wars World War I, World War II. World War wasn't even possible until the turn of the century, the 20th century. Then you had World War I, World War II. Korea and Vietnam, 16 countries involved in Korea. I don't know how many countries in, in Vietnam. Probably the same number. Many, many people lost soldiers in that war. So all the evidence suggests that we're in an extremely special time right now. Your antennas should be polished. And you're watching and you're waiting. Like the Bible says, the, the parable of the foolish virgins. You keep your wicks trimmed. You be ready because you don't know the time of his visitation. Did I say that? I think I did. With that, let's begin our second part, the three blessings. So the Bible says in Genesis 127, again, right in line with what we've been talking about so far, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. <laughs> there is no way to pretzel that into anything other than what it says. The image of God is masculine and feminine created he, them, Adam, and Eve. Boom. Oh, and that kind of does follow our, our little scientific <laughs> thing here, right? Back to our story. In Genesis 128, God doesn't even waste a single scripture. It's not 129. After the creation in 127, in 128, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion. Three commands separated by commas. And God follows that up with Malachi 3.6. I am the Lord thy God. I change not. Oh my goodness, I change not. If I said be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion 6,000 years ago, it applies today. Amen. Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> back to our story. Bang. What does it mean to be fruitful? Boom. Bang. Bada bing. The three blessings. 
the, if this is the first thing out of God's mouth, this has got to be the most important word that has ever descended on the planet. And we have to dissect this. No one dissected this until Su Reverend Sun Young Moon came along and pulled this apart for us. Be fruitful. Adam and Eve are in the garden. They're supposed to be fruitful. What does that mean? What can that possibly mean? Remember, we got three separate commands. Be fruitful. What does that mean? With your mind and your body, you don't eat the fruit to begin with. The first word comes down, be fruitful. And the second word is, don't eat the fruit. Because if you don't eat that fruit, Adam and Eve become perfected individuals. There's nothing else they can do. If they resist that temptation, they will grow all the way through to maturity and become what? Fruitful. A tree isn't mature until it bears fruit. And then it multiplies automatically. The birds eat the seeds and take them away. The apples fall to the ground, break open in the ground, and more trees come out, etc., etc. There's a natural process. You don't have to yell at that tree, Give me some fruit, man! You're too slow! Mm. No. Given the time and water and nurturing, that tree will grow and give you fruit quite naturally. It will multiply itself. Boom. I and the Father are one, Jesus said in John 10, 30. How could Jesus make such a boast? Because he was the first one we know that did this. He united his mind. The Bible says he was tempted in all points, yet sinned not. <laughs> sinned not. Jesus did this. The Word made flesh. The logos, the expressed thought or utterance. Boom. He that sees me. <laughs> oh my. My, my, my. The fruits of the Spirit. There's no getting around this. The first blessing is maturity for Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve must grow to maturity before they multiply. And what will happen in that case? Then you will have love, joy, the fruits of the Spirit, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Yes. That's right. But in the ideal, in the ideal, you wouldn't need long-suffering. You wouldn't need temperance. What's temperance? It's not being drunk <laughs> or inebriated, right? Long-suffering. Where's the suffering? Where's the suffering in this? There's no suffering there. They're one with God. Adam and Eve have to go through a three-stage process to get there. To become fruitful. They've got to go through it. They were born sinless. People think they were born perfect. No, they weren't. If they were born perfect, they couldn't have fallen. Oh, did I say that? Mm -mm -mm. My, my, my. Adam and Eve are here spiritually. Physically mature. Yeah, great. But they've still got to go through a growth process. That's why God gives the commandment. In the indirect dominion, like a child. When you have children, do you protect your electrical outlets? Why? Because they're not ready for it. They're not ready. They love to stick forks. In them. <laughs> they just got a thing, man. Got to put that knife or that fork in that. <laughs> it's a protection. It's not you don't want to take their fun. <laughs> it's you don't want to get your kid unalived. Yeah, I said it. Do not, eat, do not eat the fruit. So Adam and Eve have to, in this realm, as long as they, they follow this commandment to not eat the fruit, whatever that fruit is, we have a whole lecture on that, they will then quite naturally, like the apple tree, they will grow to perfection, they will continue their growth, fulfill the purpose of creation, and then, then and only then, they will multiply. Centered on God, not on themselves. Right? In the Garden of Eden, we'll jump just a little bit into the fall of man. Actually, Adam and Eve are actually the tree of life. Adam is the tree of life. Eve is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in Genesis 2, 9. Right? And again, Genesis 2, 7, And God said unto the man, Do not eat the fruit, for in the day you eat of it, you will surely die. That is another lecture for another day. Oh, my goodness gracious. So, we've got fruitful out of the way now. We have a perfected Adam and Eve. Boom. What, what's the second blessing? What do they got to do now? Oh, multiply. multiply. Well, well, that's pretty obvious what to do next, right? If you've already perfected yourself individually, it's time to multiply. Perfected man, 
perfected Adam, perfected Eve, what's the only thing they can possibly produce? If they've perfected themselves, what are they going to produce? Children. children. What kind of children? Perfected children, centered on the love of God. They will make a family, society, nation, and perfected mankind centered on God. This is so simple. Galatians 4.1 says, O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you and removed you from the simplicity that is in Christ? How complicated is this? A three-year-old can get this. But this has never been explained until Sun Myung Moon and the Unification Church. Dominion. There's another blessing yet to go. Ha <laughs> ha! Centered on God, perfected mankind. See how what's happening over here? Perfected individual comes over here. Perfected mankind comes over here in relationship to the creation. Oh my goodness. The kingdom of heaven on earth. No one goes hungry. There is no unaliving. <laughs> There's no robbery. There's no breaking and entering. There's no crime. There's no drug addiction. There's no war. There's no racism. There's no craziness. Only the love of of God. The center of everything, the relationship between the mind and body is centered on God. The relationship between man and woman, parents and children, the family and God, boom, 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 centered on God. Everything centered. Imagine, imagine, imagine what kind of world we're going to. And this is what God has planned for every single one of us. Uh oh, what's this? What's this in the corner? But as it is written, I has not, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love Him. Oh, wow. I has not seen. Oy. On your best day, you haven't seen what God has in store for you. Ear has not heard. Boom! Oh my goodness! Kingdom of heaven, have dominion. <laughs> My favorite architect of all time is Frank Lloyd Wright. Have dominion. What did Frank Lloyd Wright say? This guy was, oh my God. Architecture is the triumph of human imagination over materials, methods, and men to put man into possession of his own earth. Oh my goodness, that's exactly what God wants. God wants you in possession of your earth. Why is it here? Why is it here to begin with? It's for us. Why are fruits hand size, human size? Why are oranges segmented into little mouth size that actually fit your mouth? Why does a banana have a handle? <laughs> Why are grapes... I don't get it. <laughs> The entire providence of God should be viewed with that in mind. God is not out for magic tricks. God is not a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. There will be no sign, Jesus said. There will be no sign. There will be no sign. How you will know you're in the time is your mind and heart centered on God. Your antennas polished and listening. Be ready for anything. You don't know how God's going to work. Again, again, we are in that time. By chronological history, it's not my supposition, you can look at it. In a court of law, this might win. <laughs> Exhibit A. <laughs> Convicted. Boom. For uh, TikTokers, YouTubers, go to the Principal Project of San Diego, look for John Kenny to see our other content. And I think with that, I will thank you for coming. <laughs> Amen. Amen.